we can. Are you? We can oh, now. Please. I'm going to mute people. You're going to mute the whole pile of them, huh? Yeah, the up there, so hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark.
you know, a couple thousand, three thousand type for doing mailings and outreach and prep work. And now we're going for the big one. We have two of the three perspectives. Um, Kim apparently was unable to make it, but we do have Melody Gray and Terry Murphy. Who'd like to go first? You want to get it over with, Melody? <laughs> Melody, um, you may suspect, has a relationship. Yeah, come on, come on right up here. Right up front, yeah, Melody. Great. Melody is well connected in this town and in this group. She doesn't actually live in Lubeck, but she is a student and she is using the internet in that aspect. Can you tell us about it, Melody? Um, wow. Well, I personally use internet every day. I mean, it's connected to school, it's connected to home uses, I use it for entertainment purposes, I use it for education. Uh, it's, I think we can all agree that it's probably one of the most important things in this today. Um, it's every school subject uses it. I use it for college, my early college class. And I mean, it's not just for students, it's for children too. I mean, we're, I've been using internet since I was in kindergarten and it's for, it could be for adults too. They could be in, they could be in education classes. Um, they could use it for work. It's just like, it is so important to these people that they get what they need to live because it's, that's just how this is how it is. It's not going to go away, and we just need to provide for those people. So, Melody, tell me when you're online, and all of a sudden, as our Ken said over here, you're breaking up. What does that happen? How does that feel in the middle of a college class when you're trying to listen? It is horrible. <laughs> right. It's horrible. Therein lies the reason for getting reliable internet yes. for Lubeck. Yes. Thank you, Melody. Thank you. Any questions for Melody? Nope. Oh, good. And we have Terry, who's been kind of on the other end of this teacher-student thing. Yeah. Want to okay, introduce you. yourself? Yo. Sure. Face that camera, Terry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm like Melody. I need to know. <laughs> you did a much better job, Melody. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, my name is Terry Murphy, and I retired from teaching after 41 years. 37 of those years were here in Lubeck, um, my hometown. My last year and a half of teaching was during the pandemic. In March of 2020, our school closed for the remainder of the year. As many schools, we were scrambling, we were questioning, how are we going to continue to educate our kids? Remote learning was the new buzzword all around. Um, kids and staff had access to electronic devices. We had laptops, we had iPads, but not everyone had internet service or internet service that was reliable. Some of our kids and staff had to either go to the library, town library, or sit outside the school for internet usage, which in itself created a hardship. <coughs> The effect <coughs> of poor internet service leaves rural students like ours behind. They face obstacles in doing homework, communicating with teachers and classmates, which leads to a significant impact on their academic success. Moving forward, we owe it to our kids here in Lubeck to make sure that they have every advantage to be successful. Broadband fiber network is their opportunity. Thank you, Terry. Any questions for Terry? Well said. Very good. In fact, if we could have a copy of that. <laughs> sure. Um, there's what we're hoping to do going forward, and one of the reasons that Dave is with us tonight is because um, we have a grant from our institute in order to do marketing and outreach. And one of the things that they want to do with us is to get quotes, little snippets. We'll probably take a piece of that and put them into publicity that will go out in the Quiet Times and a few other places and a mailing um, in order to reach the people who sensibly aren't here tonight. Hey, Mark. 
How's life down there in Scarborough? Is that where you are? I, I think I'd rather be in Lubeck. But, you know, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> I, I kind of like Lubeck. I, I didn't mean all the time, but it's nice <laughs> okay. be nice to be there tonight. So I appreciate you uh, offering me a Zoom. So thank you for that. Um, I'll give, let me just, I'll just talk for a couple of minutes and then you can ask questions. So as you mentioned, Martha, um, we together submitted a grant application. It turned out that the, the computer didn't blow up when we entered submit. <laughs> and it is submitted at, in front of now what will be a series of meetings and, and evaluations that will occur over the next month or so at the main uh, connectivity authority. During that process of evaluation, I fully suspect that if there are questions about the application or about the uh, some of the items within the application, that either the town, Renee, who's the organizer, the person who, um, that was, I think they call her an owner, actually, weirdly, some, something like that, or in there or myself will be getting a call to, for clarification on any items that they might want clarification on. So um, through that process, um, they, we were we, through the application we had to provide, just so everybody knows, basically a 10-year pro forma, a 10-year expense and revenue model. Um, and that workbook is relatively complicated to put together and and you know that's where some of the questions usually are generated how did you come up with these numbers kind of thing so um, that will be it will be a good sign if they contact us for clarification uh, because that will mean we're moving forward in, in the process um, so uh, or it could be a good sign if they don't contest at all because it's moving forward in the process and we've answered all their questions. So either way, I think we're going to be, we're going to be, um, this will be, this is a strong submission from my perspective, very strong, and uh, I'm excited about it. Um, I think that decisions are going to be made by January 6th. That's according to their guidelines. So on or about January 6th, unless they have create an extension for themselves, we should hear whether or not we've been successful. That will then trigger a 30-day period of which the town will have to accept the grant and the terms of the grant. Basically, they will get a contract of some kind with the terms, uh, and they will accept that contract uh, or not. Um, in the meantime, let's hope they do. Let's hope Renee and the select board accept if they get awarded. Um, in the meantime, over the next month, there is one thing that we at Axiom need to do with the town, which is to uh, get to at least very close to uh, a contract, so that because a provision of accepting the award will be that we need to have a contract, that the town needs to have a contract in place with the uh, partner ISP. So a lot of the work that's going to happen over the next month or so will be working through what that contract looks like. And I, I, I know I owe the town um, those contracts, both a construction contract and an operated, operational uh, contract, operations contract. So those should be coming shortly. They're on my list to get to you. I just haven't uh, produced them fully yet, but you, you will have those to react to very shortly. So that will be the work of the Broadway Committee and the Select Board and the, and the Town Administrator over the next month. Um, other than that, there are a couple of other provisions in the application that are going to be required once we know whether or not we receive the grant. Uh, things like uh, having um, performance and construction bonding in place, which will be on Axiom to get in place. 
and that will occur once we know whether or not we've gotten the grant. And there are a couple of other small items that we're going to have to uh, deal with also. So this is not done, but it's done, basically. <laughs> the application is in, and hopefully we'll get a good uh, uh, we'll get a good response, a positive response, and um, in the meantime, we'll have a little bit of work ahead of us. And by the way, uh, I'd say one, one last thing. I apologize. One last thing. Um, you as a town, you as a broadband committee, have done a very good job of putting yourself on the map with the state. Uh, and so the state is well aware, was well aware that they were going to be accepting an application from Lubeck and uh, is, I think that bodes well for you, that you, you, are, you, you are well known uh, to the state and what you're trying to achieve there. And because you're uh, such a strong community driven pro pro process, a strong community driven process, that will go well for you in the in the uh, process with the uh, with MCA with the Maine Connectivity Authority. So a lot of good work that you've done is now coming to a head, right? Coming to hopefully fruition with the hopefully the acceptance of this grant or the, the uh, positive uh, you know acceptance of the grant. So uh, kudos to everybody who's worked on this for a long time to get us to this place. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I do have a question right out of the gate, and then we'll move around and see who else has questions. Um, my question, Mark, is, and I, I, I know I've asked you this before, but once again, we're going around in circles in the committee about the timing of the bond, the bond anticipation note, a line of credit, um, looking at the financing, when do we have to have what in place? Um, as you know, we can't go for the main municipal bond until the spring. My reading of the guidance is that we have to have something in place by the time we get the grant. Um, we're talking about do we just get a line of credit? Do we need to get a bond anticipation note and then later a line of credit? What are your thoughts on how we should go about dealing with that matching piece that the town has to get, which we should say is just over a million, uh, way smaller than what we had anticipated? Yeah. Uh, many towns like to get a bond anticipation note but because it allows them to move forward quickly it's not, I do not believe, I may be wrong, I don't know, this is a new sheriff in town, this is the first round with MCA, with the Maine Connectivity Authority, I believe if you get awarded that they will have accepted the, the match information that you had provided, right? You need to have what they would consider match in hand and what you provided was a vote of the town authorizing the town to move forward with the match. So I don't think you're necessarily going to have to have, you know, show them the hundreds, so to speak, right? But I, I do think that for the sake of the process, you might want to consider having something in place so that you can move forward quickly on a couple of the, the elements of the process to try to shorten the length of time. Because Every month that there's a delay is a, a month on the backside when somebody may get service, right? A delay right. on the backside. It is pretty linear in that way. There's sort of a fixed set of things that need to happen. And when they don't happen, it delays everything. Uh, so it will be important for you to consider. And the towns that have their act together usually do something to try to help themselves move forward more quickly in anticipation of that uh, of that bond. Okay, that, that, that answers our question enough. We'll get on it. Other questions from here in the room or from online? It's going to be a short evening. 
Peggy, you aren't going to contribute to this and make Mark go through his paces? No. <laughs> Mark is doing a great job. I think that he is, he's really good at this piece, right? He's very good at this sort of getting everything ready to go in to get the grant. Um, he learned a long time ago from Susan Corbett that you need to answer the questions that they ask you, right? That's a key piece. So he's very good at this. I think that for the, for the you people, the, us people, the, we, the, the, we have to be thinking about how we publicize this going forward, because we know um, there's going to be opposition. Uh, we've seen it crop up all over across the state um, that uh, places were trying to build municipal networks um, with a private ASP as a partner, so that private partnership um, is called into question by the large cable produce, uh, provider, and we need to be prepared for that, which I think is one of the reasons that the Island Institute gave you that grant to sort of help you get ready. But a lot of that is a marketing strategy. So it's great to have people come and talk, but you guys should all be out talking to your neighbors every day about how important this is and why this is different um, than uh, uh, you know what you're trying to do here for the community and why it's important that you're doing it. And so um, it's just really, it's really important that people in town understand what we're, what you're trying to do and what the outcome of that is going to be. Um, because, you know, a million bucks or two million bucks is a big price tag. I mean, I do remember not that long ago, I think it was 2015, when you guys turned down the CBG grant to rebuild the garage right before the blizzard year. Um, <laughs> and so you know that the community has to be engaged in this conversation. So that's what I would encourage you all to do, is continually talk about this to everybody. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. How about David? Can you come on and tell us a little bit about what it is that Frame is going to be doing for us? Did I, did I prep you for this, David, yeah, so or did I get you blind? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've, uh, well, Rebecca's really the, the smart one here, but she's on vacation, so she's propped me up in a chair and rolled me out, so okay. I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. Uh, um, so yes, so we, uh, through the Island Institute, have been working to develop uh, a, a marketing plan along the lines of what um, Peggy was outlining to uh, inform the town about what's going on and also drive folks to subscribe. Um, I think that's a big hurdle, is getting folks interested and getting people to sign up uh, to prove that the finances will work. Yeah. Um, so what we would like to do is um, either come up or, or on the, at your next meeting sort of present what that plan might look like. Um, and I think our, our initial thinking is to start either right after the first of the year or right after the announcement. Of the, of the grant award and essentially communicate with people in the town about the importance, the need, the process, and then give as many avenues as possible for folks to sign up. Um, so that's where we are. So if you're amenable to that at the December 1st meeting, we'd love to be a part of that and talk a little bit more about That so sounds we'll wonderful for the committee meeting. We'd love to have you. Anybody okay. else online have something they want to add? Or question? A room full of silence. Well, it's uh, 25 after 5. Seriously? We've done well. Um, I think we can all make our way home and try to stay dry. I thank you all so much for coming from your various directions. We'll see you next time. And thank you all. And travel safely. Thank you, Terry and Melody, for Thank you, Terry and Melody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Terry, yeah. did you notice? Uh, no, do you have good internet reception at your home? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Thank you. Pretty good. At school, it's kind of hard. Yeah. 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 Yeah.